Hello and good morning, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Good morning. I hope you all are doing well. Oh, got something for you today. Uh, these videos um, that we're that um, I'm going to do that we're going to look into the scriptures about is actually a request um, from a sister, a dear sister in Christ Jesus. Um, but what happened uh, was when I started looking into it, one thing led to another, one thing led to another, one thing led to another. And so we have what is going to be a two-part video. And We've got uh, quite a few notes, quite a few verses of scripture to go through today. With, um, with the few videos that I have done that the Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, has led me on to doing, there is not one that is specifically for women. Okay? So that is what this video is going to be pertaining on to. For you women of the Church of the Living God, we are going to be going through the scriptures um, quite prolifically <laughs> and looking at what God has to say in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, what our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ says about you women okay um you are expected to follow me along in the scriptures the king james scriptures the authorized version of the scriptures we, we have quite a few scriptures to go through today and on to the sister that requested this um well <laughs> um you, you know, you throw a little nugget at me and um, praise the Lord, start going to this, 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 this. <laughs> but uh, the whole thing, the whole point of this is that the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified. Okay? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Scriptures. Part one of this video, of these videos, is going to be, we are going to be specifically looking in the Old Testament. And part two of this video, we are going to be specifically looking within the New Testament, okay? So, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to King James Scriptures. And turn on to Genesis chapter 2. Okay? Again, you are expected to follow me along in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 2. We will be reading, or yeah, Genesis chapter 2. We will be reading verses 18 on to verse 25. Or uh, yeah, verse 25 in the scriptures. Okay? We read Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. A help meet for him. Some of the modern Bible perversions uh, really messed this up. Uh, really messed this up. But I will make him an help meet meat for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them on to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meat for him. 
And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now here's the definition, the scriptural definition of a woman. Okay? She shall be called woman. Here's the definition. Because she was taken out of man. Woman. Out of man. Or of man. That's what woman means. Okay? Those who are feministic uh, really hate that. But thus it is. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Very interesting to note in verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Um, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, was the father of Adam, obviously. He was not begotten of God, but he formed him of the ground, okay? Obviously, obviously. But, um, was there a mother involved right here with uh, Adam and Eve? No. Verse 24 is a prerequisite for marriage. We'll get more on that as we continue. But we see that man, that woman was made as an helpmeet for the man. Not according to what modern feminism or feminism in general tells you. The order of things is God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, man, woman, children. Feminists take that and say it's God, woman, children, men. Okay? Okay? Now, we're going to notice something here. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, which we are not going to go through. By now you ought to know these by heart. But very quickly, I do want us to read verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. This is something very important to remember, sisters, brethren. Who did Satan go to? Didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. And where was Adam in all this? See, the devil, if he wants to destroy a household, he will usually go to the woman first. A man, yes, the devil can um, tempt the man and what not to destroy his own house. Yes, <laughs> definitely. But the devil will usually go for the woman. Usually, nine times out of ten, will go for the woman. Okay? An example. When we used to live over there in the house, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would conveniently come to, my, to our house when I was not home at work, and Sue, my wife, was home alone. See, Satan would send his ministers to try to tempt my wife. Okay? But that is a plan, and that is a strategy that the devil uses constantly. And unfortunately, sometimes it's quite effective. Okay? But we know the story. We know the story here. Okay? Eve 
took of the fruit, gave it on to her husband. Okay? We know the story. And because of that, their eyes were open and they knew they was naked. Right? Now we are going to pick up in verses 16 on to verse 20. Okay? Verses 16 on to verse 20 in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Verse 15 is the first prophecy of God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But, the consequences for Adam hearkening on to his wife. Okay? Verses 16 on to verse 20 in Genesis chapter 3. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Which leads us to believe that uh, childbirth at the beginning was not to be this horrifically painful event that women tell us of. <laughs> That it was supposed to probably most likely with that, that suggests that it was a little bit easier than what you women go through, the suffering you go through uh, to bear children today. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and right here, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He shall rule over thee. And Adam said, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Look at, ver uh, look at verse 17, okay? And, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. There are those that teach that Adam knew what Eve had done, and in order to die or to suffer the consequences with his wife, he went ahead and ate of the fruit of the garden. Okay, or the fruit of the tree. I disagree with that. Upon knowing that Eve took of the fruit, Adam, the head, okay, should have been like, Eve, what are you doing? What? Boom! Get that out of your hand. Are you, what, what's wrong with you? That is what he should have done, but he didn't. Now, there are some that, like I said, that um, say that because of that, Adam decided to go ahead and to suffer the same fate as his wife. I don't agree with that. And that, and I'm open to discussion on that. Okay, I'm open uh, on to discussion for that. Uh, Paul gives a good parallel about how um, we are to love our wives as our own selves and how he died for the church. Okay. That's, the, that's where um, most of the people who say that will go to. But see, what I, what I believe is that what it exactly says, that Adam hearkened, listened to his wife. It's like, here, I got this for you. You should go ahead and eat it. Okay? That is what I believe. Okay? And we see the consequences Hereafter, that is what I believe. Um, again, I'm open to discussion for that amongst the body of Christ and amongst the sisters. Okay, but the point is also in verse 16, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Uh, over here in Genesis chapter two, 
Okay, verse 18, I will make him and help meet for him. Okay, the relationship between Adam and Eve before the fall was very, very different. There was no sin involved. Okay, but once they had eaten of the tree, and there came sin because they had disobeyed the Lord. Okay, it's works. All right, <laughs> it's all works in the Garden of Eden. Okay. And after they did that, their eyes were opened, and they knew that uh, they were in sin, and they knew that they was naked. They were ashamed because they were naked, okay? All right? And the consequence of that, in verse 16 in Genesis chapter 3, And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He is to be the head, Okay? He is to be the head. Now, go to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Now, this is talking about Abram. Okay? Abram's wife was Sarai, okay? And uh, God called Abram out of his land of Ur, the Chaldees, and it's like, go to the place where I will show thee, okay? Check this out. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 under verse 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Pay attention. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him for righteousness. So right there you see, that the Lord said to Abram, that, what does it say? But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Okay? His own son shall be his heir. Okay? That is the promise. God promised Abram a son. Okay? But now, here's the tricky part. Genesis chapter 16, okay? Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 6, okay? Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Hearkened. Remember how Adam hearkened to the voice of Eve, his wife? Okay. Okay? Verse 3. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So right away, kind of backfired. 
And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. <laughs> I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Now, see, in Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 on verse 5, God made Abram a promise of an heir. But see here in uh, Genesis chapter 16, and Paul expounds on this as an allegory between the two coven covenants, okay? But we see what? Sarai and Abram taking it upon themselves to fulfill the promise of God, right? That is what we see. And who instigated it? Sarai. Okay? Sarai was a godly woman. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. But they went to attempt to fulfill God's promise on their own means of their own power. And what happened? What happened because of that? Let's read now verses 7 on to verse 16 in Genesis chapter 16. Okay? And the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call, call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the and she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me, for she said, have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the well was called Bir Laharoi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Now, when you trace the descendants of Ishmael, okay, when you trace them back to Ishmael, they are the equivalent of today's Muslims. The majority of those who are of the Muslim religion, their, uh, lineology, uh, their genealogy can be directly traced back to Ishmael, the firstborn of Abraham? Yes. 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 Ishmael was the firstborn of Abraham. Yes, he was. But we see again in Genesis chapter 15, the promise of an heir. In uh, verses 4 and verse 5. Okay. But in uh, chapter 16 here, verses 1 under verse 6, Abram and Sarai, through Sarai, saying unto Abram that, hey, take my uh, maid so I can have a son, okay? They went about to fulfill God's 
promise on their own power, out of their own strength, out of their own wisdom. Okay? And what happened was the birth of Ishmael, who in time is the father of the Muslim people. Uh, Islam was created by Roman Catholicism, just so you know, <laughs> okay? There's plenty of evidence to support and suggest that. But, okay, the genealogy of the Arab and those who are Muslims primarily can be directly traced back to Ishmael, okay? Okay? Do you see that? Abram... When Sarai came to him about this, should have been, uh, no, 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 Sarai, no, Sarai, no. The Lord said, he will give us a son. And some will argue, well, he didn't specifically say how he would do it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Later, you have to keep reading the scriptures, okay? But very similar to the Garden of Eden. Very similar. Abram should have been like, no, 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 okay? And until um, you see also that in the beginning, it was supposed to be one man and one woman, husband and wife. These two shall be one flesh. And what happens when a concubine or another is brought in? You see? You see? And this, again, this does not mean that Sarai was acting, was evil in any way. No, no, no. No. But they both should have waited on the Lord to fulfill his promise when he said. Okay? And on that, uh, on that, chapter 17 Verses 15 on to verse 22. Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 on to verse 22. Okay? Now this is the institution of circumcision. Okay? You go ahead and read the context on your own time. Okay? Okay, go ahead and read the context on your own time. But we'll be reading verses uh, 15 on verse 22. And he changed his name to Abraham, and Sarai had her name changed to Sarah. Let's read. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face, and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael! might live before thee. Check this out. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Let's read 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. God chose Isaac. Not Ishmael. When you get the chance to witness on to a Muslim who is of the seed of Ishmael, this is where you take them in the scriptures. 
God chose Isaac. That doesn't mean that uh, a son or daughter of Ishmael cannot get saved today. But of course not. But it is in Isaac your seed shall be called. Okay? Or in Isaac his seed shall be called. Okay? That is the consequence when they went to go and fulfill God's promise by themselves in their own power. When they should have waited for what God would do. Do you see? Do you see? Okay? God promised Abraham a son through Sarah. And it is in Isaac. Okay? Now, go to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 15. Now these are the three visitors. Two of them are angels, and one is God manifest in the flesh right there. Okay? Yeah, not, um, you know, one is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, a precarnate um, form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? God was in flesh right there. All right? So, let's read. Uh, Genesis chapter 18, verses 9, on to verse 15, okay? And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And, she, and he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will, he said. Who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, right there, okay? I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, referring to her husband, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child when it, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And, the, and he said, Nay, but thou to this laugh. Note this right here in verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. Sarah right there referred to her husband as Lord in fulfillment of what the Lord said in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? And again, this is the Lord himself speaking to them in, in flesh, okay? Um, that was God, you know, the third one. <laughs> that was God right there. That was the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? As Melchizedek was the Lord Jesus Christ, is the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Same here. Same here, okay? But right there, again, verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. Okay? So now, go to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Sarah was a godly woman. And um, with the exception of her going to Abraham with Hagar and Abraham hearkening on to her to go in on to Hagar, okay, Sarah was a godly woman. Sarah was submissive unto her husband Abraham. Okay? Okay? 
Now, go to Exodus chapter 4. Look at verses 24 on to verse 26, okay? Now, when it comes to circumcision, the men children of Israel were to be circumcised as a sign of the covenant, okay? That's why circumcision was there. And circumcision were to be performed by the men. Within Scripture, with only this one time, do you see, ever see, a woman doing this? Check this out. Exodus chapter 4, verses 24 on to verse 26. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him, who's to him, Moses, and sought to kill him. Sought to kill Moses? Why? Then Sephora, who is not a Jew, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. It's like, okay, Brad, why are we looking at that? Moses should have been the one to circumcise his son. But he didn't. And because he didn't, the Lord sought to kill Moses. Moses, of all people, because he had not done the, um, the seal, the sign of circumcision onto his son. What happened? Sephora, who was not a Jew, who was not a Hebrew, she did it. It's like, cast a foreskin at his feet. And you see what uh, she said to him about it. Okay? She did it. It should have been Moses. And because she was the one who did it, and saved Moses, uh, saved Moses' life, she was a little upset about it, wasn't she? Because she did what Moses himself should have done. What do we learn from this? See what can happen? When the woman does what is pertaining onto the man, And also, we can go back now, go back now to Genesis chapter 17 on this. Genesis chapter 17, verses 23 on to verse 27. Go back there. Genesis chapter 17, verses 23 on to verse 27. Okay? Genesis chapter 17, verses 23 on to verse 27. And Abraham took Ishmael, who did it? Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin, in the selfsame day, as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. And then you read also elsewhere in the scripture that uh, the man child was taken on to the priests to be circumcised. Priests were men. Women were not supposed to circumcise the child. But you see Sephora did that to her son and saved Moses' life when it should have been Moses to do it. And you see, and go back to Exodus chapter 4, you see how uh, Sephora kind of uh, kind of chastised Moses for it. 
Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. There are certain things that women are not supposed to do, that men are supposed to do. And likewise, there are certain things that women are supposed to do that men aren't. Okay? You see? Do you see so far? Okay? Now, go to Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. We are going to read this whole thing. Numbers chapter 25. Okay. This is after Balaam. Okay. Um, the king of the Moabites, I believe it was. Yes. Yes, the king of the Moabites got Balaam so he could curse Israel. Instead, uh, Balaam blessed Israel. Okay? And then afterward, uh, he went to his own house. Check this out. Numbers chapter 25. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Through the women. Through the women. At the baiting of Balaam. Ah! Let's continue, okay? And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal pure. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now see, at the baiting of Balaam, the children of Israel committed whoredom with the daughters of Moab, okay, through Balaam. And because of that, it turned the children of Israel away, their hearts away from the Lord. Okay? Through the women. Baited by Balaam. Yes. Okay? Let's continue. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the men of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas the son of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him a covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain was with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a prince of a, a prince of a chief house among the Samanites. And the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Cosby, the daughter of Zor. He was head over a people and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor. And in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a prince in, of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Turn to uh, turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter... Uh, no, excuse me. Revelation chapter 2. Not 22. Beg your pardon. Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 under verse 17. 12 under verse 17 in Revelation chapter 20. Uh, Revelation 2, uh, verses... Uh, 12 on verse 17. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast, deni and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, which taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. What did we just read in Numbers, chapter 25? So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And we will read, oh, keep reading, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So you see that Balaam, through the, um, the daughters of Moab, cast a stumbling block, for the children of Israel. You see that, okay? And those uh, Moabitish and Midianitish women that the children of Israel joined themselves to turned their heart away from following after the Lord. Okay? Okay? Now, Go back into the Torah to Numbers chapter 30. Numbers chapter 30. Numbers chapter 30. We're going to read this whole thing. Okay? Numbers chapter 30. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a, if a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, if her Father, hear her vow, and her bond, wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. Talking about covering, and what is that? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, talking about the covering, okay? Let's continue. 
But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. Okay? Let's continue. And if she had at and if she had at all an husband when she vowed, or uttered aught out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But... If her husband disallow her, disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. Okay? <clears throat> but every vow of a widow... And of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establisheth all her vows, or all her bonds, which are upon her. He confirmeth them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall any ways make them void after that he hath heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth, in her father's house. Go back now to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. Verse 16, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bear, bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay? Now, go to, I know I said we were going to be primarily in the Old Testament in this video. But we have to, with that in the air, we have to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Come on, fingers work. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 on verse 16. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. 
for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Now this is talking about spiritual covering, not physical. Okay? Okay? For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Of man. <laughs> That's what woman means. We already looked at that, okay? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Sorry, all you feminazis out there. Okay? <clears throat> for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. That means, uh, that is a, uh, a reference to how the sons of God in the Old Testament, which were angels, went on to the daughters of men. Okay? Uh, Brother Brian, uh, uh, in an older video of his, expounded on that quite wonderfully. We're not going to get into it. But that's what that is referring to. Okay? Uh, because of the angels, the sons of God, the angels that uh, came and laid with the daughters of men. That's what that's referring to. Okay? Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. For as the, woman is of, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Spiritual covering. Spiritual covering. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Okay? A woman is to have a spiritual covering. Father, husband, or a spiritual head, a pastor. Okay? Okay? That is the way it is. The, pa the, the pastor is not to be in the place of a husband or in the place of a father, meaning that they, you know, hey, Come on. No, 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 no. If the woman have, uh, have not a father, uh, have not a husband, okay, they go to the pastor, okay, with their questions. And like if they're in a, a, par, uh, in, a, in a moment of witnessing or something like that, because the woman is not supposed to teach men, okay, not supposed to preach. But uh, when they run into something, they can say, uh, "Here, let me uh, let me uh, go. Let me turn you on to my pastor. He can answer your questions better than I can." Okay? Or uh, the wife is, if they're being confronted or asked many questions, it's like, "Oh, here, let me get my husband." Okay? Or let me get my father. See? And we're going <laughs> to. That is what the scriptures teach. Okay? That's what that means. Okay, and that crosses dispensational lines. Okay, okay. God has a very specific purpose for the woman, a special, glorious, wonderful purpose. But the woman is not supposed to usurp authority over the man. So now, Getting back into the Old Testament, okay? Getting back into the Old Testament, go to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4, verses 1, onto verse 4, okay? Judges chapter 4. There was 
a woman judge. There was a woman, ju a woman judge. Judges chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Herosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Now look at this. And Deborah, a prophetess, oh, excuse me, and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebedoth, she judged Israel at that time. Yes, there was a woman judge in Israel. Okay? And go now to Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. Ma, uh, the wife of Manoah at the birth of Samson. Okay? The wife of Manoah is not named. But we're going to see really quickly in these two verses a capacity of the wife. And also of a woman as a encourager and a comforter. Judges chapter 13 verses 22 under verse 23. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. They saw God? Oh, the angel of the Lord there, <laughs> God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, our father. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Look at this. Look at this. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shewed us all these things, nor would as at this time have told us such things. See how she kind of like, it's like, honey, relax. If he wanted to kill us, he wouldn't have received these things of our hands. I mean, okay. You see? One of the capacities of a wife and also of a woman of the church of the living God. You see? Now, go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. Here's some really good instruction on white, uh, righteousness for you, sisters of the Church of the Living God. Okay? Now we're going to skip around in um, 1 Samuel chapter 25. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 3. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Okay? Of the tribe of Judah. Now, skip.
skip down to verses 14 on to verse 17. Nabal, uh, David sends men to Nabal to like, hey, we were looking after your guys in the wilderness, okay? And we didn't let no one hurt them. Hey, we're in the wilderness, you know, on the run from Saul. Could you spare us a little? Could you give us a little help after we've done this for you? And Nabal was like, who is David? Who are you? I ain't giving you nothing. And David was a little perturbed by that and sought to kill Nabal for that. Take vengeance in his own hands. Check this out. Verses 14 on to verse 17, okay? Check this out. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and day. All the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Now we are going to do a little reading here. Verses 18 on verse 42. Okay? Pay attention to this. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And he said unto his, her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. What would have happened if she told Nabal? You roll that around in your head a little bit, okay? And it was so, as she rode upon the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. And David, now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all this fellow, all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. David was pretty upset, wouldn't you say? Enter Abigail. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off her ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine, ear, in thine audience, and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he, Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. Now granted, she is talking about her own husband. But look at the, the character of Abigail here. Note this, okay? And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought upon my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, 
because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, nigh either that thou hast shed blood causelessly, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. You talk about intercession. And all you sisters of the Church of the Living God, <laughs> you talk about instruction and righteousness for you today, sisters. Okay? <clears throat> and David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. Remember the wife of Manoah too, by the way? Let's continue. And blessed be thy advice. A wise woman. And blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, Except thou hadst hasted and come to me, to come to meet me. Surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. He's going to kill everybody. But see, a godly woman came to pacify the man of God, David. You see? Let's continue. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail, now watch this. And Abigail come to, came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. See there? Another wise thing that she did. He was drunk. And it says he was merry. And he was merry with wine. He was in a good mood. He, he thought of himself of a king. She didn't say anything to him. Because he was not sober. Ladies. Sisters. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, she went and told him everything, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after, that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take him, to take her to him to wife. Now check this out. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee, to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth. Sisters, your instruction in righteousness. And said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. 
And Abigail hasted and arose, and rode upon an ass, and with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David, and became his wife. And then in verse uh, 43, it says that he also took Ahanon of Jezreel. Okay? And David had many wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Okay? God allowed that, but you see the consequences throughout the uh, first and second Samuel and first and second Kings. Throughout that, from having multiple children by multiple women. Okay? An absolute mess. <laughs> God allowed it. Okay? And you have to also have understanding of the way it was during the time of the kings. Okay? But from the beginning, it was not so. One man, one woman. And these two shall be one flesh. Uh, sisters in Christ. Um, there's a lot that you can learn. For your instruction and in righteousness through what you see here uh, in Abigail and also in Sarah. Okay? But now, but now, go to 1 Kings chapter 16. We have looked at submissive women. Thus far in the Old Testament, Abigail, Sarah, the wife of Manoah. Okay, there, yeah, there are a lot of others that we could uh, also have looked at. Yes, but those, um, that's what the Lord gave me to give you. But let's look now at the flip side. First Kings chapter 16. Verses 29 on to verse 33. 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 29 on to verse 33. Here's the flip side of a woman who is un, uh, under submission to her father or her husband. And if today in this dispensation, uh, a single woman, spiritually, you pray to the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. But remember, today, in this dispensation, and throughout scriptures, and we're going we're gonna to see a perfect example of what not to do. Okay? But, okay, you have a question, you do not have a father, you do not have a husband, Okay? You go to your pastor. Okay? You go to the author your spiritual authority, authority that's over you, who is a man. Okay? You pray directly to the Lord. You go to the Lord. Okay? Yes, absolutely. I'm not saying that. Okay? The man does not replace the Lord Jesus Christ. No, not at all. But when you have questions, you are to go to a man. Okay? Your husband, your father, or your pastor. Okay? But here's the flip side. Here's the opposite of that. Again, 1 Kings chapter 16, verses 29 on to verse 33. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, a light thing to do that, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up 
an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Jezebel. Yeah. For instruction in righteousness, uh, Jezebel is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, definitely. And also quite the type of the lost woman. <laughs> definitely. But very quickly, go back now in First Kings chapter to First Kings chapter eleven. We have to touch this. First Kings chapter eleven. Verses one on to verse thirteen. We have to we have to mention this. Okay. Solomon was greatly blessed of the Lord. Right? One of the one. One of the wisest men outside of God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, okay? Uh, one of the wisest men that ever lived. Solomon had a problem, though. First Kings chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 13. But King Solomon loved many strange women, meaning not of Israel. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, uh, we looked at what happened um, uh, that Balaam did through the women, you know, how he you know, the women were, uh, went and caused havoc amongst the Israelites at the uh, baiting of Balaam. Okay? Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall ye come in unto them. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Hold your place. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Hold your place there. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Verses 14 on to verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. You there? When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. I uh, like how the Lord made provision for that. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, Solomon did that, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. Instruction in righteousness, Go back to the world. To the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Instruction and righteousness, brothers, sisters, we ain't supposed to be going back to the world. Let's continue. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Are you looking at that? That his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. The Levites. Excuse me. 
and it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all his words, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes, to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment, to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Go back now to 1 Kings chapter 11, and we pick up at verse 3. Remember, he loved many strange women that were not of his kindred, of Israel. And what happened? They turned his heart away. Let's continue from verse 3 on to verse 11. Right? Uh, where was that? Uh, oh, on to verse 13. And he had 700, uh, well, I just, and he had 700 wives princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. A thousand women. I can't even imagine. Your sisters, can you even imagine? For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians. Note that. Ashtaroth, the goddess. Okay? And after Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord. As, David, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away, was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had committed and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee. I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the, all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, for, and for Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen. And then you see how the Lord raised up adversaries. Okay? You see that? Now, we have been introduced in the scripture to Jezebel. Jezebel. Go to 1 Kings chapter 18. Verses 1 through 4. We're going to do some skipping around here. On your own time, read the whole chapter. You, it'll be a great benefit to you. But, and it came to pass, uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 1, on to verse 4. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. There was a drought um, for three years. There was no rain in um, Israel at the word of uh, Elisha. Okay? And, Elijah, and Elisha went to shew himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in the land. And Ahab called for Obadiah, which was, which was the governor of his house 
Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Note that it says when Jezebel, not Ahab, Ahab was king, but it says when Jezebel cut off the prophet, the prophets of the Lord. Mm. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The, uh, the head is supposed to be the man is head over the woman, not vice versa. Hmm. Hmm. Now, we're skipping a little onto verses 11 onto verse 20. Okay? 11 on to verse 20. And go ahead and read the context on your own time. Okay? But we're skipping now to verses 11 on to verse 20. And uh, Elijah goes to, um, you know, Obadiah and tells him all this stuff. You know, uh, hey, don't worry. I'm going to appear before uh, Ahab today. So go tell him, chill. Okay, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to disappear. You're not going to get killed. Okay, so. Verse 11. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now, Thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely shew myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Elijah said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Jezebel's table. Jezebel. Who is, who is the pants in that family? Mm -hmm. And check this out. 1 Kings 19 verses 1 on to verse 2. <laughs> in, the, in the margin here of the scriptures I have written alpha female. Um, sisters, Church of the Living God. God does not want nor expect you to be a alpha female. That's very dangerous. It's very dangerous for you. And look at the American society and culture, the Jesuit America that we are, with the feminism. I rest my case. But check this out. 1 Kings 19 verses 1 on verse 2. 
And Ahab told Jezebel, again, who wore the pants in that family? <laughs> and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, little g, do to me and more also. She's speaking like a man. Look at Bush, Butch Myers. Okay? Speaks like a man. Acts like a man. And she even looks like a man, like Jack Nicholson. Okay? <laughs> and that's an insult to the lost Jack Nicholson, actually. But let's continue, okay? But, uh, but note how she's speaking. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Speaking as a man, this Jezebel. And what happens when a woman takes on what pertains to the man? The place I used to work, the manager, the lost Jewish young lady, she had mannerisms like a man, she acted like a man, okay? Arrogant, like a man. <laughs> not right in her head, okay? It's very dangerous when a woman takes on what is pertaining to a man. And even so, when a man takes on what is pertaining to a woman. Uh, we're looking at Jezebel ladies, sisters of the Church of the Living God, to remind you of how you ought not to be. Okay, and remember Abigail. If your husband is lost, remember Abigail. Let's continue, okay? Now... Go to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. We're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. 1 Kings chapter 21. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, uh, that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. <laughs> king of Samaria, yeah. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good, uh, good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Now, we are going to see what happens when the roles get reversed. Okay? What happens when the man is not the head of the house? Check this out. Check this out. This should trouble you, uh, men who are watching, who may be watching this. This should trouble you greatly and disgust you and you sisters, ladies of the Church of the Living God. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the words which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father. Look at this. And he laid him down upon his bed, and turned away his face, and would not eat. Aww! <laughs> Poor little crybaby, why don't you go suck your thumb while you're at it? Look at that! Wah! Little crybaby! This is the king! Little, little wuss! I beg your pardon for me using that word. But what else is there to say? Check this out. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, 
Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Now remember Man uh, the wife of Manoah and how Abigail, okay, and uh, Sarah are examples of godly women who encourage, okay? Check this out. You think she's encouraging. And he said unto her, because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give me thy vineyard, you. Yeah, little baby. Now check this out. See, this is what happens when the roles are reversed. Look at Jesuit America. I rest my case. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard and the ball, the Jezreelite. Who was in control? in the reign of Ahab. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and she see, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling at Naboth, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Oh, what a wonderful woman, huh? And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And like the house of ba and like the house of Beshah, the son of Ahijah, 
for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. You looking at that? Whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put, on sack, and put sackcloth upon his flesh, and fasted, and lay in sackcloth, and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest, how, seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Only in appearance. See, during this dispensation, it was faith and works. Okay? And if you continue reading, you'll see that Ahab was not right with the Lord. Ahab is not in heaven. Ahab is in hell. Okay? But the works that he did pleased the Lord. But check this out. Again, verse 29. Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Ahab was doomed. But because he did that outward act of humility, God had mercy on him like that. Who ran the kingdom during the reign of Ahab. And right there, verse 25, But there was none like unto Ahab which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And, go to Revelation chapter 2, now, Revelation chapter 2, That. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And here is the loving Lord Jesus Christ. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. That woman Jezebel. Mystery Babylon. The mother of harlots. Revelation chapter 17, anybody? Oh, and how many parallels can we come up 
with for today. Again, Butch Meyer, uh, the spiritual advisor to Jesuit Trump. <laughs> um, uh, what, oh, what's her name? Uh, Paula White. <laughs> and of course, um, I believe, uh, very quickly, I, I do have to mention this. The Jesuits are going to put in power who, who is ever going to be worse for our nation. I personally believe that they are going to put Joe Biden into the office of president here in America. And Joe Biden is verifiable, crazy, stone cold nuts. And, not, and remember, here in America, they're pushing the Black Lives Matter movement. And Joe Biden's vice president just happens to be a black woman. I believe whoever is worse for our nation is who the Jesuits are going to put in. If it's Trump, he stays. If it's Biden, which I kind of think are, is going to be the worst choice, but they put Biden in, they take him out because he's incompetent, and through all the, the pushing of the Black Lives Matter, America is going to have the very first woman president who just happens to be black. That's what I believe personally. We will see. But, 2 Kings chapter 9. 2 Kings chapter 9. We're going to be doing some skipping around here. Okay? Second Kings chapter 9. We will read to start verses 4 on to verse 10. So the young man, even the young man the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said unto, unto, and Jehu said, unto which of all us? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose and went unto the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of, the, of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of of Jezebel. Okay? And the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. Okay? Jezebel was in a lot of trouble, <laughs> so to say. Okay? Now, go now to verse 30 and uh, Jezebel is also mentioned in verse 22 but we're going to be reading verses 30 under verse 37 okay Jezebel's name is mentioned in verse 22 you know where it says uh, we'll read that verse by itself and it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu and he said is it peace Jehu and he answered what peace so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so ma many. Perfect type of the Roman Catholic Church. Perfect type. Okay? Now, verses 30, on to verse 37. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, put on a lot of makeup, and tired her head and looked out at a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, had Zimri peace who slew his master? Mocking him. 
even in the face of annihilation, this vile, wicked woman, Jezebel, mocking Jehu. And he lift up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he trode her underfoot, stomped her to death with the hoofs, with the horsey. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go see now this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palm of her hand and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him. And he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so they shall not say this is Jezebel. And when you compare this from verse 30 on to verse 37, uh, and in the book of Revelation, verse uh, chapter 17 and 18, lines up perfectly with the destruction of Mystery Babylon. Okay? You see what happens? You see what happened, sisters? Very stern warning. And sisters, if there's any of this of Jezebel that rears up in you, you need to repent of it. You need to repent of it. Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. Very quick backstory, Jeremiah 4, not the Ezekiel bread. Jeremiah 44, very quick backstory, Nebuchadnezzar comes and whoops the snot out of Israel. Takes some captives, but he leaves some people there. And sets um, uh, Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, as the um, head uh, in his absence, and Ishmael of the seed royal come and kills them, and um, they chase uh, Johanan and all them, chase them out. And they go to Jeremiah to uh, have him pray to the Lord. And they say, well, we'll obey what the Lord tells you. And then uh, the Lord through Jeremiah says, don't go into Egypt. And uh, chapter 43, they say, ah, the Lord hasn't spoken to you to not tell us to go into Egypt. We're going into Egypt because Baruch, the son of Neriah, set a theon against us. So they go into um, Egypt regardless, okay? So we pick up in that, that's the back story, okay? We pick up in Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19, okay? And when they were in Egypt, they continued the same practices that they were doing before Nebuchadnezzar came and whooped the snot out of them. You would think that they would get the point, right? Right? Uh, brethren, sisters, read the book Night by Eli Wiesel. Okay? Just before uh, the Lord allowed uh, Hitler to devastate his people through the judgment of the Holocaust, they were practicing their Kabbalah. Okay? They were far from the Lord. Even now, after the judgment of the Holocaust, the Jewish people who are not saved, who are not of the Church of the Living God, are still knee, uh, neck deep in their Kabbalah. Okay? The cycle is, return, is uh, repeating itself. But, okay? Check this out. Verses 15 on to verse 19. And you're going to see the Catholic Mary in here. What? Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense on to other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, 
answered Jeremiah, saying, Now hold up. The men knew that their wives have burned incense unto other gods, and all the multitude and all the women that stood by a great multitude. They were women, hear them roar. The men knew that they did this, their wives did this, and the men didn't rebuke their wives. Let's continue. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. Semiramis, Diana of the Ephesian, Ishtar, Shimu, okay? Roman Catholic, Mary. And to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done. We and our fathers are kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offering, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Stern warning. Very stern warning for your instruction and in uh, righteousness, brothers and sisters. But of course, something that cannot be neglected, a whole lot of instruction and in righteousness. Go to Proverbs. You know which one. You know which proverb. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 16 on to verse 31, to end uh, the chapter and to end this video. What is that? What is this? Oh, that's for the, uh, the other video. Okay. Proverbs 31, verses 10 on to verse 31. Instruction and in righteousness for you, sisters of the Church of the Living God. Regardless of your standing, uh, regardless of where you are, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil, won't need to look outside the house. Shouldn't do that anyway, okay? Because uh, verses 1 under verse 9 pertain unto the man in Proverbs chapter uh, 21. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now here are the good works of a virtuous, godly woman. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. Okay? She considereth the field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. Okay? She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arm. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. God is not against women having an income, making money. Okay? Not supposed to go out there and do what men do. But look at what she was doing. Making things at home. Working from home. Okay? Okay? God is not against a woman having an income whatsoever or making any money. Absolutely not. No. But... She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. Let's continue. 
Verse nine, from verse 19. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold to the staff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Instruction and righteousness for you sisters today. Okay? She stretcheth her hands, her hand out to, ah, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. For example, when praise the Lord, my wife finally lose her job because she's refusing to take any vaccination. Uh, my wife is a wonderful cook. She could uh, make food to bring to people, okay? Make uh, breads and cakes, stuff like that. She um, she does uh, not embroider, but uh, she makes blankets herself, okay? She can sell them, see? See? And I know several sisters who work at home. Yes, God's not against that. You're not supposed to usurp authority over the man. God's not against a woman having an income. Remember that. Okay, let's continue. Strength and honor. Oh, wait, let's finish verse 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. The law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. And right here, I love this. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let her own works praise her in the gates. Brothers, sisters, so you see, sisters, sisters of the Church of the Living God, you see throughout the script, the Old Testament scriptures, the the expectations from the Lord of the woman of how to be as a godly woman through the examples that we had looked at, Sarah. Okay, the wife of Manoah, uh, Abigail, and how not to be, Jezebel, <laughs> obviously. But now we will be looking into the New Testament with a whole bunch of scriptures to go through, okay? But for right now, I'm going to uh, turn this off. Take a little break. Get to that. Uh, get to that second part of that video. I also have another video to make uh, a to answer a question from my brother. But um, sisters of the Church of the Living God, don't keep yourself just in the New Testament for your instruction and righteousness. Look to the Old Testament to the examples of godly women of the past. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this video. Going to take a little chill for a little bit, and we will see you in the next video. Part two of this. I love you.